Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me for another installment of Slab and Gab today, where we take a look at a graded card or cards in my collection and talk about them a bit. Uh, this is a pretty big one today because it is an addition to one of the larger projects that I am trying to get done in my collecting lifetime, and that is a playing era run of Mickey Mantle's flagship card from each year starting in 1953. Uh, through his final issue in 1969. So I've uh, been at this for a couple of years now. I, I try to pick one up on occasion when I have a little extra money to funnel into the hobby. Uh, in the past on uh, the channel, we've seen the three that you have in front of you as a backdrop here, the 64 tops, number 50 in a PSA 2.5 was the latest one that I showed. Uh, prior to that, I had shown the 68 tops, number 280 in a PSA 3. And then the 66 tops, also number 50, and also in a PSA 3. Um, so a nice trio there. Um, just getting started showing off some of the later year mantles. Uh, my run is not yet complete, though I do have others to show uh, here in the future on the, on the channel. Um, but for now, I did add another 60s mantle that I was missing recently. And this one has kind of a cool backstory behind it. So my good buddy Brian over at Walkenbach. He has, you know, determined this year that he wants it to be the year that he gets the Michael Jordan rookie card. He's a big basketball collector, has kind of put off getting the 86 Fleer MJ for, you know, whatever reason over the years, and finally wants to put it to bed. And that, you know, as those of you know that have one or that have shopped for one, that is a very pricey card. Uh, in my personal opinion, it's the most iconic basketball card ever produced. Um, so it's a tall order to track one of those down. And so Brian had a couple of episodes on Walkenbach recently where he was looking to sell some graded cards that he had in his collection uh, to try to recoup some money to put towards the Michael Jordan. So I can definitely relate to, you know, saving up or trading up, you know, into a Jordan rookie card and, and what a pursuit that is and wanted to try to help out Brian um, since I consider him a hobby friend and a friend even beyond the hobby at this point. And so when he put those videos up, I was kind of looking through everything. Definitely saw some nice stuff. Um, there were a variety of cards that I would have been happy to add to my personal collection that were available. Um, but as it stands, I settled on just one. It was one of the pricier cards that Brian was offering. However, he definitely gave a very fair price on this that in my estimation was a little bit better than uh, or certainly better than I could have done on eBay, you know, for a similar grade. So um, opportunity, you know, had a little cash available and uh, an opportunity to help a hobby friend achieve a goal while simultaneously achieving one of my own hobby goals um, just felt awesome. So uh, I've talked long enough. Here is the new mantle for the run. It is the 1967 Tops issue in a PSA 3. Um, this is fantastic because it's right in line with you know what I typically have acquired in my mantle run, as is almost always the case with the vintage cards that I try to pick up, and certainly with the more expensive players like you know Mantle and Hank Aaron and Willie Mays, I am looking for low to mid grade examples that present much nicer than the assigned grade would have you believe, and this is certainly a case of that. You know this is the fourth mantle that I've shown in the run, and all of them now range in the 2.5 to three range as far as PSA grade, um, but they all look great. And I think uh, this is no exception to that. Um, the mix card in 1967, it's it's not one of his more aesthetically pleasing cards, I will admit. Um, that You know, it's a very brightly lit close-up portrait photo of an aging Mick in the dugout. Um, so it is not a favorite and definitely doesn't carry the same uh, kind of sway that like his final 1969 issue does, for example, uh, which is a more classic batting pose. Um, but I sort of like that this one adds some variety to the run from the 60s. Um, the three cards in the background here that we had prior to today shown on the channel all have a very similar photograph. And while I love, you know, each of the three, um, it is nice to get a little bit of variety here. Um, this example is slightly off center, more so top to bottom than it is left to right. And obviously has a little bit of soft corner issues. I mean, it's a PSA 3. So just like all of the mantles I have, it is not perfect, but again, it just presents really, really well. Uh, vibrant color here. 
Um, you know, if you don't really kind of focus your eyes intimately on the corners or the centering, you could really believe that this card, you know, otherwise freshly fell out of a pack in uh, the summer of 67. So pretty awesome card here. Really glad to be able to add this one to the run. Uh, I thank you very, very much, Brian, for the opportunity to add this to my PC at a reasonable price. Um, the other thing that's cool about this, like if and when I do complete the Mantle run someday, this one will always kind of have a nice memory attached to it of my first year here on YouTube and uh, meeting Brian and so many of the other wonderful folks that I've come into contact with. And uh, it's just kind of cool to have a card in the run that came from a hobby friend as opposed to buying it from, you know, a stranger on eBay or my slabs or something like that. So a uh, really, really neat addition. Super happy to have this run up to four cards and counting now, as, at least as far as, you know, cards that I featured on the channel. As I mentioned at the outset, I do have a few more of these uh, mantles in the run that are already in hand that I'll be getting to at some point, um, but the run is not complete. And as a spoiler, um, you know, we have most of the latter part of the 60s here, um, but I do not yet have the 65 or the 69 um, that are missing from the, the late portion of his career in this photo. So I am on the prowl for a decently centered copy of a 65 and a 69. The 65 in particular is proving tough. Those cards are just so often off-centered, but uh, for now, we have the four in front of you, and uh, I will certainly be back with more sports card content and more Mickey Mantle slabs in the future here on the channel. So I appreciate you stopping by. I hope everybody's staying safe and enjoying the hobby. And until next time, take care.